Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 12 for chapter 6. The topic is systems of two linear differential equations. In the previous videos, we consider the case where we have two repeated real eigenvalues and uh, we derive the solution, the general solution, for both with the for the case where there exists one eigenvector or two. So in particular for the case where there exists only one eigenvector, there we needed to um, find a second one so-called generalized eigenvector. It's not really an eigenvector, but it has some property associated with the eigenvector. And using that, we can form the general solution. So the discussion ended there, and uh, in this video, we pick that up and we'll continue the discussion on how to sketch the face portrait. Okay, so for the case with repeated eigenvalue and one eigenvector, the general solution takes the following form. Let's repeat it here. So there are two solutions, z1 and z2, where z1 is just e to the lambda t times v, which is the eigenvector. And z2 takes this form. There is, there's a new vector we call eta, which is the so-called generalized eigenvector. Okay, so it's formed in this way. And in our example, lambda equals 2, therefore we have 2 everywhere, and v is 1, negative 1, and then the eta is 0, negative 1. Okay, so before we can sketch the face portrait, it would be useful to look at the solution and understand some qualitative behaviors of it. So let's make some discussion. One. So first, let's see what happens as time grows to infinity. As t grows very large, and then we see because of this exponential term with a positive um, rate in front of t, this is blowing up to infinity. Therefore, the absolute value, the, the length of the x vector, grows unboundedly. And the second asymptotic behavior is long time ago, when time goes to negative infinity, then this becomes zero, and then the solution goes to zero. So all solutions are coming from the origin and going out unboundedly. Now let's look at special cases. Let's first see if c2 equals zero, then this term is zero and you only have c1, z1, which is just this term. So the solution equals that. Here is a scalar multiple. Here is the eigenvector. So it, all the solution will lie in this direction of the eigenvector. So we know that the line through the origin in the direction of v is a trajectory. And then since uh, lambda is bigger than zero, solution goes unboundedly as time grows, then the arrows will be all pointing away from the origin. Now next let's consider the other case, that is when c1 is zero, then the solution only um, takes the second one, the z2, c2 times z2, where z2 is this form. So how does this solution behave asymptotically as t goes to infinity? We see that the sum of these two terms, um, the magnitude of it, for this one is the exponential function, and for this one is the same exponential function but multiplied by t. So when t is very large, this will be way bigger than that, and therefore we say that um, this term dominates. This means as t goes to infinity, the solution approaches infinity in the direction of v, because the dominating term. And then on the other hand, the other direction of asymptotic behavior, long time ago when t is negative infinity, and we know all solutions coming from the origin, so in which direction do the solutions coming out from the origin? 
So when t is negative infinity, and we see that the exponential term becomes very small, but then this one is multiplied by 1, and this one is multiplied by t. It's a big negative number. Therefore, it's much bigger than this one. Okay. So again, the dominating term is still the first term. So that means the, the solution um, approached the direction of v again a long time ago, meaning that it comes out from the origin in the direction of v, which is its only eigenvector. But then here we notice a change of direction, because um, when t is big and positive, and when t is big and negative, the direction is flipped exactly 180 degrees. Okay? So that's caused um, by the change of sign of t from a negative to a positive. And therefore, the, the solution will um, also change direction and point towards the opposite direction. So at t goes to negative infinity, it comes out from the origin in one direction. And then as time progresses, it would make a turn and go into the opposite direction when t is very large. And then the final thing is to understand how it turns. In what is the direction of rotation? And to understand that, we need to go back to the system and check the direction of field. OK, so um, before we um, check the detail, let's um, sketch um, a, f a few things. So um, what we have already known. So let's say this is x1. And then this is x2. And then the eigenvector is 1, negative 1. So let me draw that in blue. So the line in the direction of v, which is this direction, through the origin. So okay, pretend this is a straight line. I'm not able to draw straight with my, um, with my, um, so that's the direction of v. OK, so that's a trajectory where the arrows are pointing out. That's how the solution is uh, going. And then um, we also discussed that um, asymptotically, when time is plus infinity, the trajectory approaches the direction of v, either in this way or in that way. And, and when t is negative infinity, so a long time ago, solution comes from the origin in the direction of v, so either going this way and that way. And then once it comes out, it will change the direction. Okay, From negative infinity to positive infinity, the direction flips 180 degrees. So how does it flip? So there are two possibilities. One is it comes out in this direction, and then it would bend, and then eventually go to that one. Right, so let's um, sketch that as a as a as a blue, a green. So, a green possibility will be a solution will come out in this direction, and then it will bend and eventually go out. Okay, so is that the correct one? And another possibility would be it comes out in this direction and then it will turn, and then it will go there. Okay, but all this is qualitative. So, which way does it rotate? Let's um, look at, we can pick a point. So let's look at the point x is 1, 0. So um, OK, I will pick a black point. Let's say this is 1, 0. And then we can compute um, the x prime, which is 1, 1. Just pick, plug into the equation. So 1, 1 is a direction that points up, up like that, right? And then we can check another point at um, 0, 1. OK, so let's say this is 0, 1. And then it says it's negative 1 and 3. So it points in this way, right? So which do you think is uh, the, pos it's the possible rotation here? Well, we see that if um, it shall be the red one, then 
when it crosses the x1 axis, you will have a, a vector pointing downwards, and it doesn't match that. And the green one is the one that matches, right? So you could uh, um, possibly have another one coming out uh, slightly um, more, and then um, it crosses here, and then it changes in that direction. Okay, so, okay, sorry, it's a bit messed up drawing, but uh, I hope you see what I tried to say. So, by that, in we determine the rotation of the trajectory. Now, finally, we can look at the general case where C1, C2 are both not zero. And here, actually, the discussion is very similar to um, the previous discussion. And one see that as time goes to infinity, the nominate term in the solution is again always this term because it's multiplied by t. That means solution approach the direction of v. And then as t goes to negative infinity, again this is the dominate term. So the solution also approach the direction of v. And then, due to the change of sign in t, the solution will change direction. It will kind of a rotate as it goes from plus infinity to negative infinity for the time evolution. Okay, so here I present to you the actual um, trajectory of that example we had plotted in, in MATLAB. So. Um, and we see that um, here, this straight line is the, um, the eigenvector v, and then solution in this half comes out in this direction and then turns, and then as time grows, and it goes again in the direction of v. And solution down here and is because the rotation is like this, so it comes out here, and it rotates and it comes down. Okay, and all the arrows are pointing away from the origin because the eigenvalue is bigger than zero. Okay, so here we just put as a remark, if the eigenvalue lambda shall be less than zero and it's repeated and you find only one eigenvector and you form the solution using the generalized eigenvector, then the face portrait look the same, except the arrows will be reversed, and all the arrows will be pointing towards the origin. Okay, so let's do a summary for the case where A has repeated eigenvalues. So the first case is the case that you can find two linearly independent eigenvectors. In this case, the origin is called a proper node, and it's also called a start point, which um, describes the face portrait because then every, um, all the lines coming from the origin is a trajectory. And then the second case is that there's only one eigenvector. Okay, and then you will have to find the generalized eigenvector associated with it to form your general solution. And in this case, the origin is called an improper node. Okay, so we don't know what is improper about it, but that's the notation. And then about the stability, it doesn't matter if it's a proper node or improper node. It's only determined by the um, the sign of the eigenvalue. If the eigenvalue is less than zero, then it's stable, asymptotically stable, and if it's bigger than zero, then it is unstable. We see that um, for the case of a proper node, um, it's pretty um, a simple algorithm. You find the eigenvalues and you find the eigenvectors and you form your solution. But for the case of an improper node, um, it's a bit lengthier computation. So we had gone through just one example. In the next video, we will go through another example. And this video, I will just end here first. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.